Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got an intriguing report and one in which you're not gonna wanna miss. Uh, on the agenda today, we're gonna talk about everything from what's happening in Florida to the increased amount of shootings across our country, not only in our schools, but across the nation and some of the agendas that are behind it, and then just kind of tie that uh, to some of prophecy and prophetic things that we find in scripture and in the Bible. But on the broadcast today, I have brought David Hebner. You guys know he is my favorite movie producer and director and uh, he's going to be uh, conducting the TV series The Last Evangelist as you guys know I'm gonna be in that and I'm so stoked to be a part of it uh, but I'd love to bring him on periodically to kind of give us those updates and tie in some of what's happening in the news to what's happening now uh, so David are you with me over there Hey, Lisa, I'm with you. It's so good to be to be with you again. I guess I'm your favorite producer because I'm probably your only producer, right? That uh, <laughs> in Hollywood, you know. Uh, but thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, it's so great to be with you and to be with your audience because it's like things are going crazy. I mean, really, sometimes I have to check my sanity and go, "Am I? Is this? Is this the Twilight Zone?" You know. Um, the, one of the things I want to bring up is the mass amount of the shootings that's been going on. And I'm not talking about what happened last week, the week before last, a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago. I'm talking about, let's start back to, to Columbine, 1999. I think it was April, wasn't it? Uh, 1999. A kid walked into a school mowed down a bunch of people. And from there, here's where we are right now. So here's the point I want to make. I'm sitting here writing episode number 10 about a school shooting. And in order to write these things, like I said, Lisa, to make them sense, have them make sense in Last Evangelist, you can't just, you can't just go out and write anything. It's got to make some sense because I call this CSI meets the book of Revelation. Okay. So it's investigative reporting. So in order for in the last evangelist, for people to be able to walk into schools and public places, they have to pretty much get rid of the guns. They have to take the guns away from the people, okay? To the point where even the cops are not carrying guns, all right? So here's my point. Could all this be happening, Lisa, from 1999 to today in order to condition us to take away any power that the people may have. Now I know you've heard this many times, but you got to listen to it in the in the in the the angle of which I'm coming. In order for they and you know who they are to be able to control us and to do what they need to do uh, when it comes to cashless society, mark of the beast, uh, the Antichrist, all all the prophecy we talk about in in the Bible. In order for them to do that, the people have to become disarmed, okay? It's a frog in hot water. It's happening slowly. But what really got me and what really made me understand this is really happening is when I saw the last event that happened in uh, Florida, I think in Broward County. By the way, I just left there the day before uh, it happened. And I see now where some production company has come in with these kids and put them in, in, in front of a nice background with a very, very expensive camera. And these are big productions. These aren't cheapos with some cell phone. Somebody's behind this and somebody's instigating it. And it's all propaganda to put the focus on the evil one, which is supposedly the gun and the people who want to keep our rights. But yet I haven't heard anything about the shooter and about the what's really going on. What say you? Uh, yeah, I mean, these things have been OK. So we haven't heard much until Columbine. And then we had a, a domino effect of this happening in our school districts. See, let's just put it this way. Rahm Emanuel says never let a crisis go to waste. And I believe the far left, the political left, the Democratic left, and there is no Democrat Republican Party anymore. It's all just one mesh tag. And the Democrats, they're just long gone. Uh, but anyway, this is part of their agenda from the get go. So they've ex or um, uh, explo exploded the problem, if you will, in order to 
make uh, the problem worse and make it a bigger crisis. And uh, and they're not necessarily encouraging it, but by promoting it and putting it across multiple TV shows, you're giving other kids the idea to do the same, to do similar. So in a sense, they're promoting this and then they're blaming it on the gun, the gun, the gun owners, the NRA. And so the NRA uh, lead there has been attacked numerously. You're part of the NRA. You're the enemy. Uh, you're on YouTube as a patriot here. Me, for example, they're censoring people for having having views on being part of the NRA. This is part of our First Amendment right. We have the re uh, 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 and Second Amendment right. We have our right to bear arms, a right to, to have guns, a right of freedom to freedom of speech, but they're using our second amendment to fight the first amendment to, to get rid of both of them in you, if you will. It's like, let's kill two birds with one stone. When in reality, guns are what keep people safe. So there's definitely an agenda. Um, I know that part of that democratic left and I'm, and I'm adding a lot here, but the United Nations, they have, they have that new world order mentality, but they have an entire website devoted to, uh, reintegration, disarmament, and, uh, demobilization. These are the kind of people that they hire and they hire they are hired specifically to take guns away from people this is why donald trump wants to break away from the un and others want to break away from why i don't think we should be a part of our, the united nations or any world-minded thing that wants us to give up our sovereignty i'm okay with making peace with nations and having that trade that we need we have to have trade and we have to have peace but in reality the kind of peace that they're pushing is not real peace and it's let's put everybody under one banner and under one rule and have people like saudi arabia ruling over us i don't think so no, no of course what they're doing is they're making the gun the evil one okay a gun is just a tool it's a tool just like you would drive a car now i know a lot of people going now wait a minute heaven or you know i don't get my gun out every day and but you know a gun is a tool it 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 has no motive it has no brain it's what's behind that tool but what they're doing is they're making that tool the criminal the evil one i mean what about the guy that got in his car and plowed down all those people in santa monica did they want to outlaw cars I mean, that would be insane. So what they're doing is they're conditioning the people to believe that the evil is the gun. It's the machine, and that's the bad thing. And what they're doing, whoever they are, and I think you kind of have a good idea like I do, they've gotten a hold of this situation, and they've milked it for all they can by putting these kids in front of nice backdrops. And I believe they're probably coaxing them. I mean, these kids, look, I'm, I'm a producer. I'm a director. I mean, I can look at uh, I can look at someone talking into a camera and giving their take on something and sharing their heart. And I can tell you, Lisa, if they've been directed, I can tell you if they've been coaxed. I can tell you if someone's worked with them almost like an acting coach. And I just watched some of these kids that went through all this stuff at this high school. I watched a whole video on them giving their uh, spiel. And I'm telling you, somebody's directing these kids. They're, and it's not it's, just that one. It's multiple, multiple ones. They've done this on numerous occasions, everything uh, from the first shooting till now. And it's not just at school shootings. They do this uh, with victims and things at, say, you know, the, the massacre that happened in Las Vegas. And, and that's it. You are able to point out these kinds of things, uh, but it's happening everywhere in a lot of things, which tells me that there is absolutely 100% an agenda why would you direct certain people to be a certain bent if there wasn't an agenda and they're doing it in all venues, not just one in multiple and anything having to do with gun regulation or, or something that can improve, uh, make the NRA look bad, make gun owners look bad, then they take advantage of the situation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And now they're going after the corporations. And of course, the corporations are caving in. Right. They're caving in and they're dropping the NRA. Lisa, for the first time in my life, I have to tell you, I'm very nervous about this. This really concerns me. Now, I know the Lord has everything in his hand and it's all been laid out in Scripture. But I'm telling you, this is a very scary situation. When I started backing up and looking at the big picture, don't look at just this one shooting. Look at everything that's happened since 1999 up to this point and see how they've come in and they've manipulated and they're slowly twisting it and they've gotten an upper hand. I can tell on this one, they're getting an, getting an upper hand. OK, one of the kids in the video said, hey, listen to me. We're not backing down. This is the new generation, the new generation. I'm going, oh, that's scary. 
that is very scary. Now, we know that in Scripture, uh, Matthew 24, nation shall rise up against nation, okay? Now, we think sometimes this is country against country, but nation against nation is people against people. And Jesus said this in the last days, in these last days, and he gave a whole spiel in Matthew 24. Read it for yourself. Nation will rise up against nation. So what's happening is the people are getting divided. And I see the division happening for the first time. I see the split in the land of the earthquake dividing the land of how people are going to have to take one side or the other. Folks, it's getting ready to happen. You've heard it. You've heard it many times, but it could come about any day now where they come in and they literally start taking away the guns. And then, Lisa, what's going to happen? You know... No, but I mean, who? I mean, if they have control of the guns. Mao took the guns. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Uh, here's one. I mean, I mean, there's there. Seventy million people have died through the years due to gun control. Governments taking guns away from people or citizens, and then people have not having the capability to defend themselves has led to over seventy million deaths. Like actually, on my website, I've got a list of all of them. Some examples are in 1911 uh, in, in Turkey, guns were restricted, and as a result, one and a half million uh, Armenians were unable to defend themselves and ethnically cleansed by the government. That's in Turkey in 1911. Here's another, 1929. 20, Soviet Union had gun control, and they and 40 million were killed as a result from Stalin's regime. Hitler, Nazi Germany established a version, okay, of gun control in 1938, where millions of Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, mentally ill, disabled, and some of their brown shirts were killed. 1935, China did the same. 50 million political dissidents were rounded up, arrested, and killed. 1964, 1981, Guatemala also did gun control. 100,000 were killed by the government there. 1970, Uganda, uh, 30, 300,000 Christians killed by the government between 1970 all the way up to 1979 during that regime in Uganda. There's also Cambodia and Rwanda. Both have thousands to millions of people dead because governments, We, I mean, it's easy. Let's just look at history and see what happens. Now, uh, obviously, that's not a cliche, but at some point in the future, you're, you're guaranteed a bad, it may, and we may have a good one in now, Donald Trump, but somewhere down the road, we're going to get some idiot like a Stalin or a Hitler or, you know, what happened in Turkey. We're going to have it. And when we don't have the ability to defend ourselves, we're in a lot of trouble. Oh, absolutely. Well, if they crash this market with Donald Trump in, I don't want to get off on another subject, with him in, and they blame it on the Republicans because the, the, the economy crashed, you bet we're going to have such a crazy person in the White House this next four years. It's just all going to go down. But let me ask you this question, and this is what I'm in the midst of writing right now, episode number 10. If they announce tomorrow, Lisa, and to everyone out there listening, that you had to come and turn in your gun and you had 24 hours to come and turn in your gun, what would you do? What would the next step be? Would half the people come and turn in their gun? Would a few people? And if you didn't and it was the, the penalty was imprisonment, are you willing to face that? These are questions we have to ask. I think they are questions we have to ask. However, I see them doing the slow boil approach, at least for now, where we're with each passing event that happens, some kind of mass attack, some kind of school shooting, some kind of Las Vegas massacre happens. They pass gun control each time. The Democrats scream for it. Okay, do something now, because they blame guns, when in reality, it's not the gun, it's the user. It uh, could be the drugs that they were on. It could be their upbringing from birth. There's a lot of different reasons, okay? But it's not the gun, it's the user. Just cars can kill, knives can kill, guns can kill. Let's blame the user, right? And so they take advantage and let's do sweeping gun legislation. I know Diane Feinstein put to, put together a bill where she wanted to get rid of all semi-automatics and they're really pushing for that now. So that could be something that goes through like overnight, we've got semi-automatics taken away. Uh, but then, you know, I think there'll be big pushes and then little pushes until ultimately we're left, left like other countries where we can have it when we go hunting, you know, ammo in the trunk, uh, your gun in, in, in the front, they can't be together, they can't be separated, you're only allowed to have them here, here, and here, and here, and here. Like so many regulations, it's insane. 
insane. And that's yeah. where I see that we're headed in all honesty. And yeah. I'm sure your movie gets into a lot of that, or TV series. It, 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 it does, absolutely. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. It's a frog in, in, in hot water, okay? Our children, your children, my children, when they grow up, they won't be used to what you and I are used to, all these the, the, the great gun laws that we have, okay? They will have these restrictions you just mentioned, so they won't know any different. So when they get that taken away from them, pretty much there'll come a day where there'll be no guns. So in episode number 10, they have finally taken guns away from the police officers. And why? Because they had a re revolution within the police department. M fathers had to decide if they were going to go arrest their own sons for breaking the gun laws. They had to decide, fathers had to decide if they were going to put their mother or their wife in jail. Because remember what scripture says, that the families will be divided, right? It, 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 they'll be father against son, etc. So the government, the one world government had to come in and take the guns away from police officers because they couldn't trust which side they would be on. My, uh, my nephew's a police officer. And when he became a cop, a, couple, cop a couple of years ago, the first question I asked him, I said, um, I said, buddy, I said, when you have to make a decision whether to arrest your family because they've broken a law that this government has passed or turn against the government, what are you going to do? And he smiled and he says, I hope I never have to come to that. And I said, but one day you will. And so in The Last Evangelist, police do have their guns taken away from them until the one world government can come in and decide who is going to be faithful and who's not. And then they slowly start giving them back certain weapons. And the weapons they give them aren't these little pea shooters. No, no, no. They're giving them AK-47s. They're giving them high-powered machines that can mow thousands of people down within, you know, 10 seconds. So folks, the point is, is we need to be aware. We need to constantly be in prayer. We need to constantly talk to people and tell people what's going on. And don't let this thing just pass and think, oh, it's just another shooting. It's not. It's, it, I'm not going to tell you it's been planted. I won't say that, but I will say this. It's been planned in the way that the people who uh, are in charge of this whole thing have come down and taken advantage of it, and they're putting these kids on film and on tape, and you can see the stuff that they're spewing out. It's a very scary and dangerous situation. Indeed. Well, David, share um, the information on the TV series, where they can check it out, uh, the funding for that and all of that. So viewers have that. And keep in mind, uh, you guys, all this information is in the links below and it's funded by you guys. So donate if you can. All right, go ahead, David. Thank you. Yeah, go to lastevangelist.com. Sign the newsletter. It's free to sign the newsletter. We need to build a community. We need like-minded people. Okay, we need to spread the truth. That's the reason I'm doing this. There is a donate page. Please donate if God puts it in your heart. And I'm not asking you to donate for nothing. You'll get t-shirts. You'll get roles in the film. You'll get all kinds of great things. But go there. Join the family. Folks, God's people have to come together at this time, his elect. He's calling his elect to come together at this point in time and stop messing around. So The Last Evangelist is a TV series that I'm making that's going to go on and on, and every episode will just tell the truth. It's CSI meets Revelation. It's what's happening today in our current events and how that ties into Bible prophecy. And thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to get you a hat when I see you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have it. You know I would, and I'd wear it too. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, and, and you know, we're going to put this on our own TV station. So we've got David Heavener TV. It's going to air. If nobody else wants to air it and, and they're not willing to air it the way it is with no edits, hey, we're getting it out worldwide. So it's, it's a go. And we're going to be doing this very, very quickly. So we need your help. 
Awesome. So make sure you guys check out thelastevangelist.com. I'll leave links below all the information David's talking about and subscribe to that newsletter so you can keep in the loop on what's going on. Anyhow, thanks again, you guys, for tuning into my channel here. This is Lisa Haven, and that was David Hevner signing out.